that's what if we swing in that way. That's <laughs> I mean, you take this. I'll do that. Welcome back to this week's technical. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. The little bell, if you click that next to it, means you don't miss any new videos, so you won't miss out on anything exciting or interesting. In this week's technical, we are talking, as promised a few videos ago, about a physical ram or tup MOT. How do you go through your breeding rams before they need to go out to work to make sure they are in good condition, good nick to do their job. With that in mind, let's head somewhere a bit more interesting. Right, that's better back out on farm. So we're talking about tup MOTs or ram MOT. So I thought we should go and find some tups. And here we are, it's a um, fan of the channel here. Hi, I'm Cammy. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting him involved, you know, trying to give something back. Some of you might know him. Uh, and he's got a few sheep of his own, believe it or not. Uh, so these are the boys, these are the tup stud. We're gonna go through them today with him and we're gonna run you through how to do a physical ram MOT. So let's do it. From a practical point of view, one thing I always use are these forms. So I'm a bit of a scatty personality. I always tend to forget things if I'm in a rush or I'm doing lots of them, or if I'm just chatting away with a friend or a client. So these keep things really regular and consistent. And you can set them out any way you want, but the key thing is you just hit those big things. You record which tup it is you're looking at, the body condition, what their scrotal circumference was, any abnormalities. And it's just, as I say, a checklist. You can work your way down each tup, keep it consistent each time and make sure you don't miss anything. And then you can make a note and keep it in your records or your vet can keep it in their records. And you can look back in two weeks time or four weeks time or a year's time or two years time when you come back to look at these tups again and you can compare what you're finding then with what you found today. So the very first thing when you start looking at tups that you're selecting for breeding is you want to just no hands on just look at them look how they stand whether they're new whether they're old remember past performance is no guarantee of future performance again look at them what do they look like do they look like fit healthy virile tups remember tups are sexual athletes and like athletes, they can lose enthusiasm, they can get injured, and they can lose their edge. So, again, we'll, we'll pull one out here, we'll pull this texel out. A few things we can assess. Just looking away from the sheep, you can tell he's in roughly good condition before you put any hands on him. His locomotion's good. He's moving freely. He's going to be able to jump lots and lots and lots of views. He's not showing any outward signs of disease. He's not breathless. It's always a worry when tups are breathless before they've started work. So all of these things, again, just take a minute to stand back and assess before they go out. The next part, we'll put our hands on him. So again, we did a similar video last year for the sheep game on Butte. We had a look at some of Archie and Katinka's ewes. That was for selecting ewes pre-tupping. And we talked about the T's and a lot of the T's are the same. So the first T we're gonna talk about are teeth. Remember, tups need to be eating constantly when they're not mating. They need to have good occlusion. They need not to be over or under shot. Again, if you're breeding replacements, that's gonna pass on to your lambs as well. That's not something you want. So no gaps, no over or undershot jaws, and no abscesses. That would be swellings on the side of the face. The next T is tone, and that's talking about condition. You know, how fit or not is he? Ideally, again, these guys can be busy, tupping ewes. They're not necessarily gonna have as much time to eat as they normally would have. So, they need to be in good nick. Cammy, what would you call that? A condition score? Yeah. 
Uh, I'd give that a 3.5 to a 4. Yeah, three, exactly. So you can, you can just about feel the lateral processes on the lumbar vertebrae. So yeah, that's about it. And again, same again for the ones along the top of the spine. And that's exactly where you want them. You want them between three and four and probably at the higher end of that scale. So not rolling, rolling fat, but with plenty of reserve to see them through. Now, the T's. We've talked about toes. That's mostly functional. So can they walk around freely? Can they run freely? Can they jump freely? Obviously, if you've got one that's overtly lame, that needs to be treated at the time. If you've got anything with poor leg conformation, that should be selected out, especially if you're keeping your own replacements or selling breeding sheep. So that's toes, teeth, tone, toes, and then the fourth T we have to go around the other end for. You've probably guessed by now what the fourth T is, and that is testicles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is perhaps where you might call in the vet, certainly in the first year, to explain exactly what we're feeling for. But the obvious things are, are they asymmetrical? So are they the same size and shape? Are they freely movable within the scrotum? Are there any lumps, bumps that shouldn't be there? Any swellings? And what's their consistency? So for those of you who are asking, the right consistency for a testicle is either a ripe tomato, if you're a gardener, or a flexed bicep. So Cammy, could you, could you just please just demonstrate a flexed bicep for us? Somewhere. Oh wait, that's my bad seat, hang on. Oh yeah, I had to right. do that one too, Let I didn't I had to do that one. <laughs> do either actually, it's like, if you imagine like uh, Van Damme and Universal Soldier. Oh, that's it, we'll, cu we'll cut that in, right. we'll cut that in. <laughs> Those will feel good. The other thing you would do, if you hadn't forgotten your scrotal circumference tape, which I have, easily get one of those. Your vet will have one if they're coming to do it. That is where you take the circumference of the scrotum at the widest point under a little bit of tension. You're not really squeezing it, but you're making sure it's relatively snug. And you want to make sure that that is above a minimum threshold. Now, what that minimum threshold is depends on the type and the breed. I'll put up a table here so you can see what the relative cutoffs are. But generally for a shearling tup of say a downland breed, lowland breed it's about 32 centimeters one thing i should have said when we're checking those testicles i've just remembered at the end of the day filming is we need to check for scrotal mange i'll try and find a photo of that that's typically like a crusty rash they tend to get at the tip of their scrotum if they do get it when they do have scrotal mange it can irritate the scrotum it can reduce their capacity for work reduce their capacity to get used in lamb so if you do find it just give your vet a ring if they're not there already and they can sort you out with a treatment to treat that mange. Anyway, back to the video. What else do we look at? What we do, we'll tip him up if you can, Cammy. Go on, go on, first time. Oh, good job. <laughs> Pumped up the biceps. Exactly. Other bits, now we've turned him over. We can check his brisket. And this is an interesting one because you can see he's got a bit of a sore here where it's been rubbing. This is and it's still a little bit red and weepy here. That is something that can put them off jumping, especially if they're wearing raddle or they've got a raddle that's slightly ill-fitting because it rubs. You imagine if it's a bit red and sore, it's gonna put them off jumping on and then staying on. So that is something we can do something about. Again, this is some people like to have a feel of the testicles from this angle, that's absolutely fine. The other thing we like to see is whether he can extrude his penis. Again, we want to check what's called the prep use here. That's the sort of the end of the sheath if you like. We want to make sure there's no pizzle rot which is sort of an infection. We want to make sure there's no wounds, any adhesions which is where they've had a previous injury and the scar tissue sticks everything together. That as you can imagine impedes him doing his job. And then while you've got him turned over you can just check for a good flush. That suggests that the hormones are circulating at the right levels. Remember tups just like you are seasonal breeders. They react to short day lengths. So this pinkness here that is what you're looking for. A tup that's, again, ready to go. It's hormonally primed to do his job. I didn't know that one. Yeah? No, it's a flush, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a new one to me. I've never heard of that. Yeah, look anyway. from pink in here like this. Oh, so you he is, and that will be seasonal. Yeah. This time of year, they start, yeah. it's like you get the tup smell. Absolutely. Your tup starts smelling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. It's always worth doing. This tup, we've picked up the brisket. It's something minor, but again, it's sore for him. And so we need to get it sorted. And while I've been talking to you, Cammy's picked up, he's got a tiny touch of scald just in that front left. So again, it's all something we can do things about. 
and hopefully in good time before tupping. So how far are we ahead of tupping, Cammy? Uh, we are, the tups will get about the 7th of November, so we have right, so five, five weeks. Five weeks, yeah, so that's, that's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. It's so when you do it one week pre-tupping and then you realise you've got to find a tup or two or three from somewhere. Like I said, this tup, a few minor things, but in terms of his genital examination, there's nothing major. So this wouldn't necessarily be one you'd recommend for a semen analysis. If you want to know more about semen analysis and which tups that might be suitable for, I'll stick a link to a previous technical in the video description. Now, Kaz, before you spray this, I have another question for you. I don't know if the camera's watching me here. Right. Now, I go by your preachings because, you know, I, I, I look to you for everything. But you wouldn't trim that foot? Nope. No. Is he lame on it? No. No, and that's, easy, that's it. So the bit in me is thinking, that's quite overgrown, I should trim that and I but no. No, exactly. Look, all I can say, I know it feels very counterintuitive to do that, and especially when we consider that that's exactly what you do for cattle. Mm -hmm. You would trim overgrown under run horn. All I can tell you is that all the evidence, and there is a lot of evidence, suggests that that causes more harm than good. Oh, oh. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. What well, it's called about now? The oh, it's wet and long grass. Moisture on the grass. Yep. That rain coming just changed the game totally. Oh, oh. He's been a good. He's been a good student. Absolutely good. That is how to do a physical MOT on your rams, your tups, depending on where you're from. If you enjoyed that, let me come back inside because it's windy. If you enjoyed that. By all means, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell, that means you don't miss any future videos. Remember, I try and put out a technical on a Tuesday and just a vlog, which is a bit more fun, a bit more just me horsing around as a farm vet on the weekends. And then hit like, leave me a comment, any feedback, positive, negative, indifferent. It all helps me improve the channel and it helps more people see the videos. So again, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching this far. See you next time.